transfer policies truly are a dying art in football. You know, back in the day, many clubs would have had their own ways of creating the best team possible, with some of my favourite tactics being Stoke, when they used to only sign big, hulking lads, and also AC Milan, when they fell into a bit of a pattern of only signing guys who played well against them. Now though, teams are much more boring and varied in their tactics in the market, you know, with no one region or formula really acting as a failsafe for recruitment. Except for young Brazilians, of course. However, Athletic Bilbao continue to spit in the face of modernity and still to this day operate with an extremely strict transfer policy deciding who they can and cannot sign. It's been a long revered tactic by football hipsters, so I'm not going to spend ages in describing what the policy actually is, but essentially to play for Athletic Bilbao you have to have some connection to the Basque region of Spain. We could spend ages going into the idiosyncrasies of who has and hasn't been allowed into San Mames in recent years, but basically if you want to play for Bilbao you've got to be Basque in one way or another. The transfer policy at Atlético Bilbao, the Basque only policy, has gone through different different moments in the club's history. Um, like right back at the start of the club, it was founded by um, students who've been to England, who were English players, English coaches, um, or British anyway, and it didn't bother them to have players from the rest of Spain. Then after the civil war, um, you know, the social conditions changed a lot in the Basque country, and there was um, a feeling of, of everybody pulling together. So they focused a lot on, on having their own Basque players, and just from the the Vizcaya region, which is just the kind of county around um, around Bilbao. Wait, pause, pause, pause. L listen to what he just said there. The Spanish Civil War was a large contributor to this transfer policy. Without trying to turn this into a bit of a history lesson, the Basque region was a strong combatant to the Francisco Franco-led regime during the Civil War. And after the atrocities of Franco's reign, which brought a lot of hardship to the region, the Basque people tried to use this newfound unity through those struggles to build a transfer policy that made their club a beacon of Basque patriotism, something we'll come on to in just a minute. Anyway, back to Dermot. Then over time, they, they loosened it a little bit to, to allow different people in. You know, even Emeric Laporte, who was born in France, um, came through the, the system there and other players like Andrew Herrero. But at the moment, they're they're very proud of it. They, they see it as a big advantage for the club that they can um, develop their own players within the philosophy, within the style of play that the club wants, people who really identify with the club, who, who understand what what Athletic Bilbao means, and, and they think that that gives them an advantage on the pitch over, you know, the, they're unlikely to ever be able to compete with Real Madrid and Barcelona at the very top. Um, but on their level, uh, maybe the next level in Spanish clubs, they feel that just having players who, who come from the Basque country, as many as possible, who've come through their own youth system at Bilbao, but other people who, as they grew up, knew what Athletic Bilbao means and, and knows what how important it is to, to everybody in Bilbao, they feel that's a uh, a competitive advantage, I guess, in a, in a kind of marketing term that they have. Nowadays in football, we often lose that connection between the players and the region that the club is set in. Because of the globalisation of the transfer market, guys will travel all over the world just looking for a wage. And you know, that's fine, but it means when you have a rare club built exclusively out of players who are solely committed to representing the institution they've built their life around since they were young, it provides a special kind of motivation that many teams are often bereft of. Since the beginning of the 2010-11 season, of the teams who have appeared in La Liga, Bilbao have purchased the smallest number of players and had the largest profit margin between their income and expenditure. £95 million pounds of pure profit in the last 10 years, more than any other Spanish club. So as you can imagine, they've got a lot of money in the bank. Which makes me ask, why don't they start to break away from this transfer policy and just start going mad in the market, spend that cash and become a Spanish giant? For for a lot of us who haven't grown up in the club or who are not so involved in the club, that might seem like the logical thing to do because they have sold, you know, Kepa as well. They made a lot of money from him. They have more than, than any other club maybe in Spain. They have money in the bank. And at this time when, um, you know, the the market is completely different this summer. Maybe it will be an opportunity to go out and sign players. But that is, um, that's just anathema to, to the, the people. I, I wrote a, a long piece for The Athletic about the, the, the philosophy, exactly the stuff we're talking about here. And I was speaking to people both inside the club and just people who've been at the club before or, or fans or, or, or whatever. And, you know, they didn't want to spend all the money that they have. You know, they could go and sign 
you know, is Isco for for example, you know, you say okay, we could get Isco from from Madrid. He's a Spanish player. He's um, super talented. Um, we could put him at the center of our team, give him a platform, and maybe we would, you know, make the Champions League next year. They would prefer not to do that for sure. Um, prefer to finish seventh in the table or seventeenth in the table, but to to know that they they were continuing the ethos of the club and planning much further forward for the future rather than just over the next 12 months or, or two years or whatever the contract will be. The Basque region's other major club is Real Sociedad, who have also seen merit in having a Basque core to the team. And although for many years this policy was a major part of Sociedad's DNA, it isn't the strict rule it once was, with many non-Basque players turning out every week for La Real now. So why have they changed their way of dealing when Bilbao have shown little to no sign of movement? San Sebastian, where Real Sociedad are from, and Bilbao are the two biggest cities in the in the Basque country, but they're very different places. Bilbao is more it's more of a Basque, it's more like the heart of the Basque country, where San Sebastian is a more international looking city. Um, it has closer links to Madrid. A lot of people from Madrid, including the, the kings of, of Spain, used to go there and spend their time there in the summer, or is it a bit cool, or go to the beach. They have the International Film Festival. That's kind of the image of San Sebastian. So while they did use mostly homegrown players for, for a lot of their history, they were more open to, to international influences. Then John Aldridge, the, the Ireland International ex Liverpool uh, striker, he, he joined them in 1990, more or less, maybe just before that. Um, and was the first non-Spanish player that they had signed. That was a huge thing. His book is, is fantastic, his, his biography, if people wanted to check it out, just to, to what it was like for him to move there at that time. Um, his family, his, his daughter in school got um, uh, abused pretty pretty badly, told to go home. Aldridge himself, interesting character, very strong character, and you know was able to, to deal with the, the pressure and scored a lot of goals for, for the club. And But in the end, it was like, you know, it's better for everybody to, to go back to Liverpool. He was able to go back, and they have had foreign players over over recent time. But even still, the team at the minute has that that vast core, like Michael Marino's in in midfield. They have a Oyer Zabel that I was saying up front as well, and they they try to keep it keep that local Basque core without going quite as far as Athletic and saying that we just won't have any foreigners at all. And um, Real Sociedad will, except like Odegaard was there on on loan last season. And um, they've signed David Silva now, who comes. From, from the Canaries, he's not a, a Basque. So they're maybe more, a little bit trying to have it, well, I wouldn't say, it's not a negative thing, but they're trying to keep the best of the their Basque heritage as well, while also being open to, to more international influences. To finish off, one of the major criticisms of this transfer policy has been discrimination. Why can't a player from another region of Spain or another country turn out for Athletic? You know, that seems pretty off. And I can understand where those criticisms have come from, as where I'm from, Scotland, we have seen a lot of history of that, definitely. But from speaking to Dermot, one of the major takeaways for me has been that the whole idea behind this transfer policy isn't to keep the rest of the world out, but rather to promote the Basque region and its people. It's about being proud of their own um, their own culture and their own traditions and their own history. It's nothing to do with with Spain really and you don't you know into the museum in, in the club and everything and it, it's a celebration of, of what they've done themselves but they would again say that you know we we're, we have our club policy where it's our club and we can decide who we want to play and we don't discriminate against anybody like Iñaki Williams his parents um, came from Ghana I'm pretty sure from from African country you know in a very difficult circumstances in a, in a refugee camp ended up in in living in the Basque country and him and his brother as well who's, who's at the club were welcomed into the club you know they're they're heroes of the the athletic Bilbao fans you know they, they might not look like your typical idea of, of a Basque player but they're as Basque as, as anybody else 